So right now we are making a map, map of the Bulson area. Here's my video feed. You can see when it flashes, that's when it takes a photo. Over here is the path that the drone is flying. Maximum of 6.1 meters a second, that's what I programmed. It's flying at 100 meter altitude. And it's gonna make a high resolution map of this area here. So the Google map here shows no roads or infrastructure, but clearly as we look out, there has been development work going on. And that's what we want to track the progress. Okay, so the drone capturing process has been completed. Now I, I, I did that yesterday afternoon. I, the drone actually captured 104 different images from above, from 100 meter altitude. And overnight, I've actually run that through a stitching program and it has been stitched together in a high resolution map, which we can actually see here. So the colorful outline is the map that we have created. And behind that is a open street map that was actually produced in 2012. Now if we flick over here to Google Earth, let's go back to the first Google Earth image. Okay, so this was created in 2000, the year 2000. We move forwards in time, the next one was 2008. After that, there was one in uh, March 2012, another one in March, and then one created on the 16th of September 2012. This is actually the latest map that Google currently has. But for our purpose, it, it's still not really usable. It doesn't show any of the roads and infrastructure that has recently been built. That's probably the main purpose of why I chose to make a, a map of this area yesterday. So going back to my map, you can see that everything is up to date, like literally one day old, and it's very high resolution. Let's wait till that loads a little bit. There we go, it's quite clear. Okay, so here we have the border, border of my map. So where the, the old 2012 map is and the new 2015 map. Well, there we go, that's quite interesting. Clearly, this house here has been built in the last few years. With my map, I can use a few mapping tools and um, get some useful data so I could Let's zoom back out a little bit. I could create a distance measurement. So from here to here to here, for example, I'll hit finish. And then if I select that line that I've just drawn, it tells me that it's 176.74 meters in distance. I can also create an area measurement. So let's measure this block of land here, for example. There we go. So that rectangle that I've just drawn is 1743.68 square meters. If I hit finish, it actually asks me if I would like to calculate a volumetric measurement. Uh, in this case, I'm not going to because it's basically a flat block of land. It's not going to be so interesting, but I could I could see where calculating a, a, the volume of a stockpile, for example, like coal or, or diamonds or uranium, that might be a very useful tool. So once again, if I click on that area that I've drawn, it clearly comes up and it tells me that it's 0 0.17 hectares. So I'm quite happy with that. Let's zoom right back out. You can see where it lies in the greater region. Not only can I create a high-res 2D map from the data that I've captured with my drone, but I can also create 3D. And this is fairly high, high detail, high resolution once again for a 3D model. See that lovely 3D ditch that's drawn there? Over in the background you see the houses, and they're, they're pretty good. Um, I didn't, I must say, I didn't actually fly with the intent of creating a high resolution 3D model. This was more of a bonus. Um, if I zoom into the, the back side of the houses, yeah, you can see that they're not so detailed because I didn't, didn't actually capture much data on that side of the houses. 
so that's expected. But all in all, I'm quite pleased with the results. Yeah, useful little tool, over and out.